All right, hey, how's it going? So, mm, stuff we talked about today, reading tablature, a lot of what's on the page I gave you is just me writing down random notes just to illustrate the six lines and six strings that looks upside down. Um, but there isn't really that much of a reason for you to need to read tablature or write tablature for people uh, immediately. Um, but if you you can look up songs online now, it's just going to be the same six lines, and the things that'll be potentially confusing over and over are it looks upside down, and does it mean which string or which finger or which it means which you know says this string three it means the third fret, and uh, like online tablature doesn't specify what finger to use. So what do the numbers mean? They mean which fret. Um, we decided we'd learn some note names, like we realized, you know, E and F by accident, and you're going to learn the names of the open strings using your, uh, every boy gets down into at E street, so just, you know, like, you can go ahead and internalize that, it's all good, um, since you're not off it, it'll be like, the task is remember the names of the open strings, but it'll come up, um, like, you know, the second chord in your song is A sharp, um, it's one you use a fair bit. Uh, never mind what I just said. Bar chords. First of all, we got G, C, third fret, like, and then at the fifth fret, A and D, like when you're tuning. So if you could just pause your video and memorize those four note names, like, you can do it in whatever dosage, you don't get scared. It's like, seriously, it's just deciding you know the names of four dots. Um, and it's important that you quiz yourself out of order on them. That's how it'll actually solidify, rather than just going G, C, A, D, and only being able to think about D that way. After you've done that a few times, you feel, I think you're, you just had it memorized after we just talked about it a couple times. But if you notice you're forgetting one of them, just go directly at that and be like, okay, I'm forgetting D is this one. But yeah, give yourself a quiz on it. Be like, all right, C, D, A, D, just so you think about them out of order. Why this? Because all of our common chords that we play tend to, in rhythm guitar very often are below the fifth fret. First position means open chords with open strings and uh, fretted strings, and um, everything else is just we can just say bar chords. Uh, so bar chords, there are two types. There are E-shaped bar chords, so E and E minor. And if you want to do this for you know, illustrative, illust demonstrative, illustrative purposes, you could use the wrong fingers. Like you don't have a first finger, like you're barring the negative first fret, and then just move that around. But it didn't seem like you had any you know, trouble just going E. Um, but if you do, you can just play E and E minor, like you don't have a first finger, and then move that around bar behind it. But either way, so there we are. I'm, I'm a human capo. This is G. This is G, and sure enough, it is. This is G minor, like in your song. Uh, oh, sorry, I played them up there just for funsies, but yeah, this one, G minor. Well, let's decide that there's two, so there we go. There's there's group one of uh, bar chords, um, and those are E-shaped chords where we play all six strings. Group two. A chords. And again, just, you know, there's no the hard part coming. It's all good. There's A and A minor, right? So when we're playing A, we're generally thinking about, like, this string and down. Um, so yeah, here's C. Then this is you know, a C chord, or C major. And that's C minor. Like, if you know B minor from some song, that's you going. A, B, So there's four total shapes. There's E bar chord, E minor bar chord, A bar chord, which we talked about doing the other way, but when you're playing your songs, just do what you normally do, and then making that into a minor chord. Um, so the couple of chord names we're going to memorize today are A sharp, that's in your song a lot, and G minor because those are chords that don't have a first position open chord version. D minor is the first chord in both sections. It does. When you're doing it this fret, that's C. 
so you you can play those chords already. Um, yeah, so you know A sharp or A sharp major, and then G minor. Um, cool. So that's really most of what we talked about. Uh, that was actually things we wanted to go over. Um, and yeah, then, then just the concept of writing out your chord changes for your pianist friend, giving it to her, just being like, these are the changes to the song. I think that's going to go a lot better than what's been happening. And all it took was learning a few note names on the bass strings and putting together a couple of concepts for you to actually be able to figure out with unlimited time, not feeling on the spot, how to play any major or minor chord. Because you could just be like, oh, it's D, E. Minor, E, flat. I know, I mean, and there we're going for the second fret, which most of your playing chances are is going to be down in that part of the fretboard. Um, so, you know, maybe try uh, as your other assignment to write out the chord changes to, some of, to one of your other songs, which is going to be really straightforward. Just take them one at a time and just be like, okay, go C work out what the other chord is, and so on like that. Don't fight the light on this, just go one chord at a time. And chances are, like most writers, you probably use a lot of the same shapes a lot, so the same chords will be in different songs. Oh, yeah, we talked about using A7, uh, which is the take off the middle one, or where you put this G in on the first string, like in G. Um, yeah, so that would be like... leading, which is like just how the notes fit together, showing that in there sounds cool. Um, yeah, so there you go. And then uh, we also talked about find a song that's in a major key that you like, um, and maybe learn to cover it, or just play the changes, or write a song in terms of a major chord. Open-ended assignment. All right, it's a pleasure seeing you today, um, and we will continue to fill in the gaps and do efficient stuff.